Some of the coffee shops had copies of living papers, but they were all in English, and though he was understanding more and more, he missed the meat and marrow of living papers in Spanish. So he'd head to the levee to see how or from whom he might obtain papers from home. Sometimes he had to pay. Other times they were given to him for free, especially when he didn't ask if he could have them for free. Just sheer patience, sheer forbearance, until it became clear no one was going to buy them, and then the stevedores would give him a look and, in curiosity and sometimes even respect, hand him the papers. And on the occasions when he did ask, he did so without begging. He never begged, not even when writing I beg you in an official document, which unlike a living paper is a tombstone, an impossibly thin grave etched in haughty grammar and a language spoken by no one. Dead papers exist only to necrify life, to create the illusion that it can be contained and archived. Dead papers abound in end points, in full stops. Living papers, on the other hand, arrive all nice and warm, bleeding ink, showcasing stories, insinuating endings, endearing themselves to all, cliffhanging the troubles of the day before, foretelling those of the day to come. Local living papers were things he read in order to corroborate what he'd seen, because the written word convinces you of the impossible, from moving worlds, transcribed as climate, to the movement of people, reported as drama. Living papers that came from Mexico seemed anxious to stretch their bones and say what they'd come to say, which, in this particular case, what a fucking farce, was that the dictator had sent a delegation to Cuba for the express purpose of drumming up soldiers for an imperial guard. He laughed wholeheartedly. Pathetic one-legged dipshit. Then laughed brokenheartedly. How he longed to be there now, not recruiting soldiers or thinking about empire, but about words less majestic, sipping his coffee and eating his sweet bun, bent over news that was not so dispiriting. The newspaper had also reported, while they were lost out there in the swamp, that Juan Alvarez, Ignacio Comanfort, and Florencio Villarreal had proclaimed the plan of Ayutla, from Guerrero. Time for old one leg to go, it said, albeit with fancier words, Time for him to go and take his boot lickers with him. 